The Sonic movie took what might be the biggest 180 we've ever seen in entertainment. It looks legitimately fun, and taking a look a little closer, there's actually a few really neat details that show how far the creators have gone to respecting the Sonic universe and the character as a whole. The trailer opens in Sonic's homeworld, which is obviously supposed to be Green Hill Zone. The walls have the same checkerboard patterns, palm trees decorate the island, waterfalls rain down from the background, and even the totem poles make an appearance. And of course, this wouldn't be Green Hill Zone without a loop-de-loop. -loop. There's even a slope to work up Sonic's momentum. We don't see any enemies or any recurring level designs from the original game, but it's still such a loving recreation of the most iconic Sonic level. But it doesn't stop there. Of course, as noted in the previous trailer, when Sonic comes to the real world, he ends up in the small town of Green Hill. Perhaps this is a parallel version of his world. We see Green Hill double down during Sonic's baseball game with the Green Hill team cap. But Green Hill isn't the only Sonic location paralleled in the real world. During his ping pong match, we can see that Sonic's playing on a road sign pointing towards Hilltop. Now that's a zone from Sonic 2. In fact, this scene's hiding a few things. In this part, Sonic's reading comics, and who's he reading? Of course, it's the Flash, who shares a lot of powers in common with the Blue Blur. A license plate in the background reads, ND4 SPD, or perhaps better read as Need for Speed. I think Sonic likes to go fast, you guys. Now getting a bit more focused into the video game references, the headband Sonic wears during the nunchuck scene is a direct callback to the iconic Sonic emblem. Though of course there's no Sonic inside it, there's kind of a Sonic under it though. The callbacks do ease off over the course of the trailer, although we do see Sonic doing a very similar victory pose to that of the games. It doesn't really directly mirror any of them, but it's very much in the style. But where things get a lot more interesting is in the hotel room. Sonic can be seen performing the exact same bouncing animation as seen in the games. It can be a little hard to catch with so many Sonics running around the room, but it's a very neat little touch. Also, what's that on the TV? Go for Broke? Doesn't seem very Sonic-y. However, Go for Broke is a real short film and was actually the first production Jeff Fowler directed. And who's Jeff Fowler? The director of the Sonic movie. Really cool touch. Getting back into the game callbacks, at one point we see Sonic using some metal debris as a skateboard, much like he does in the opening of Sonic Adventure 2. And he even has his slide ability from the modern games, although this particular pose has a lot in common with his Sonic Advance slide, and if that's actually the case, that's a pretty deep pick. So while it's not as packed with references and easter eggs as something like Detective Pikachu, there's still a lot of Sonic love packed into this trailer, and we can't wait to check out the full movie to see what else might be hiding. But did you guys find anything that we missed? Let us know down below, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on the Sonic movie and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye!